the Hobson Zeno, um, and welcome to another episode of uh, Ron Flies' uh, drone in front of his garage. Um, this will be the maiden flight of the uh, the Hobson Zeno. Um, I'm sorry I didn't choose a more scenic location uh, for this first flight. Uh, it just snowed yesterday, so all my usual fields and parks are um, kind of soggy. Um, I promise I will be at a more scenic location in the next video, hopefully tomorrow, uh, to get you a better looking uh, video. But uh, today we're going to um, do our first uh, test flight, little mini test flight here. We're going to take this uh, gimbal guard off. Very nice gimbal guard. I'm uh, improvement on the uh, similar uh, DJI uh, product. Um, and uh, I've already inserted the uh, memory card in the slot here. Memory card. I would say it goes in upside down with the label facing down. Um, I already did a binding with the uh, transmitter um, uh, when, during the unboxing uh, ceremony, so I have it bound up already. Um, I'm, I'm going to be using the, um, the iPhone um, 10X, the uh, original model. Um, I've got the Hubsit app uh, open here. Um, I'm going to change it to the... Um, the Zeno here. Uh, let's put it in the uh, in the cradle here. Pull this uh, thing down here. Again, this is kind of an improvement on uh, on the way uh, DJI um, handles the phone too. Hope I'm aiming this darn uh, hack cam right. Um, we'll plug it in here. All right, using the uh, iPhone uh, cable, it's even marked if you can see it. iPhone and then uh, TX up here. So, um, of course, I've uh, tapped the phone. Let's see here, phone open. Okay, we've got the app going here. Let's go back here. Let's uh, start the uh, the drone up here. We're going to put the uh, little button on the back here. We hold it down. Um, so you hear the noise sounds kind of a whistling sound so um, you can see all the lights come on there we have um, kind of bluish lights in the front red in the back we're going to enter the uh, enter the device here uh, we're going to we have already paired it so we're going to go to edit main uh, interface here and there we go we're at the uh, screen here it's going to connect here in a second Oh, I, I didn't, oh, I've already messed up. I didn't turn the transmitter on. You hold a long beep there to turn the transmitter on. I may have to do this again since I prematurely plugged the phone and everything in. So I've already messed up. I should uh, turn the drone on first with a long press and then turn the transmitter on second with a long press. But I just got a, a beep there, a haptic beep, telling me that um, it's connected to the, um, the phone thing. So, okay, it says trust this computer, so you hit trust. And uh, then I have to put my super secret code in here. Hold it, look away. Because usually when you have this stuff paired up, the uh, face ID thing doesn't work. Okay, so you see we have a, um, you know, a live FPV feed there. It says uh, weak signal, so we need to do the, um, the uh, compass calibration here. Since I've never had it outside before, I'm surprised it hasn't... Uh, you know, told me that we need to do it, but I already know how to go into settings and perform the calibration. So we tap this button over here. Um, okay, we got bind and aircraft. I think it's, uh, let's see here, this one, the controller, this one here. I think it's this one here. Okay, compass calibration. So uh, bind to the current aircraft, yes. All right, GPS accuracy test. Uh, Let's go back there again. I did uh, doing something wrong here. I did this inside once. Everything seemed to go well, but uh, let's do the. Uh, okay, here we go. It wants us to keep spinning it around. There we go. Hope you can see that. Okay, now it wants me to turn it with the camera facing down. I'm kind of doing. You know, just a few foot or two inside the garage, so I'm probably, um, you know, not going to get as many signals as I when I move it outside here. All right. So it's telling me, um, it reminded me to take the gimbal protection off, even though I already have uh, the gimbal thing off. So we're going to move it, 
kind of out here to the open now. All right, it's on the ground. It says weak, uh, weak GPS on here. I hope you can see that. Uh, but um, again, I was doing it in the garage, so it should pick some satellites, you know, up out here. Oops. And I keep hitting this button here. I didn't have it in really correctly. Okay, there we're back. All right. So um, we're dealing with uh, we got about a nine. To 10 mile per hour wind up here we have gusting up to um, like 15 miles per hour so it's kind of a windy day but usually the winds coming from the side of the, the house that's behind me so this is kind of usually kind of a sheltered zone here so um, okay we're up to 10 satellites I don't exactly know how many satellites this requires before takeoff but uh, we should be there in a couple minutes and yeah, I'm kind of next to this metal car here it's not the the, uh, it would seem to be not the best spots, but I, I never have any problems flying anything out here. I usually get a good connection on everything. Okay, it says the motor's locked. It looks like I have enough satellites to take off, but uh, I may wait just another second or two before I actually uh, take off. And uh, I'm not sure how you unlock the motors. I don't have my uh, map up here yet. I don't know why I don't have a map. I, I kind of do there. I don't have a full map. Huh. I think I had a map when I was inside. So here's the camera settings here that don't work. You hit that button and nothing happens. We're waiting for a firmware update. All right, we're up to like 11 satellites now. Um, and uh, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, I read the instructions, but I'm not sure how we're going to unlock the motors here. So um, let's see. We're in sport mode here. So let's turn it to normal mode. And um, let's hit this motor's locked. Let's do it like a down and out and see if that. Oops. Okay, we unlocked the motors. Okay, now we're going to take the hit the uh, automatic uh, takeoff. Let's start recording first. Oh, we took a picture, so let's go to um, video. Okay, we still took a picture. Hold on. All right, now we're okay. Let's hit this automatic takeoff. We got all right. There she goes. There she goes. Now Dustin had a little problem. Dustin Dunhill with it hovering on correctly. It's blown back to me, but there it kind of goes down a little bit. I haven't hit the uh, throttle yet. I'm only hitting the, um, the uh, you know, the right left control stick. But I haven't hit the throttle yet. And mine is just hanging there at about uh, four feet high. It really hasn't moved since it got itself adjusted after takeoff. I mean, it's roaming around a little bit, but um, they're starting to lose a little altitude. Let's see if it's right in itself. Now, now put itself back in location here. I didn't do that. So, um, let's see here. What's. Okay. okay, now I'm taking it up. Let's see how it holds itself up there. All right, it's drifting around a little bit up there, definitely, but it, it's definitely holding its uh, its altitude. The the back red lights are uh, blinking a little bit. I don't know if that indicates anything. The uh, the blue lights on the front are solid. So um, yeah, it's it's it. it's you know it's drifting around slightly up there, just like any any you know toyish quadcopter uh, that doesn't have. Um, Optical flow sensors and a downward facing camera would, you know, it's not totally locked in like a DJI, but again, uh, what's compared, what's not always compared to a DJI, what's compared to a, like a Hubson 501 or a Bugs uh, 2W, Bugs 2 anything. So it, it's just as study as those two uh, quads would be up there, just maintaining its altitude just as well as a H501 or a Bugs 2W. So, um, 
you know, let's, I'm going to take it, the camera off. We're going to go down to the controller now. So we're going to kind of go up a little bit. So I'm kind of watching the drone more than anything else. Yeah, so it's very controllable, no doubt. It moves pretty fast. It's got that typical Hobson thing where you stop and it kind of, you know, shakes around a little bit. And definitely not as bad as the 501. When you would put the brakes on the 501, it would, you know, like, just wobble all over the place. This definitely doesn't have that. Let's see if sport mode actually works here. Um, I'm at an altitude of uh, 18 uh, meters. Let's go up to about, let's get it up over 20. Um, it doesn't seem to be handling this dark too well here, so I'll be, see if I can tap the screen and do anything. No, not really. Yeah, it's a little dark up there, that's for sure. But, um, let's, we'll take it out and not in, in sport mode and see what happens. All right. So I didn't look at the screen to see what the actual speed was, but let's put in sport mode and see what happens. Yeah, sport mode's still not activated. It's no faster in sport mode than it was, you know, in uh, normal mode. So let's go back to normal mode. Let's flip it around, see if we can... Yeah, there's a little more blue sky. Maybe it can... Let's go up a little higher. Now we're up about... Uh, we're up over 30 meters now. Let's see how smooth this is. Let's pitch down a little. Pitch up a little. I, I don't find, can't find a way to get the... Uh, the you know lines on the screen so you can line your shots up but uh let's go backwards a little bit and see what kind of video we get definitely a good flyer i mean uh i mean it turns real nice here it comes back at me again It definitely handles real well. Alright, I'm bringing it down a little bit. See if it has any that vortex stuff going on here. Alright, I'm kind of bringing it back down. It doesn't seem to have any problems go, you know, coming down. It doesn't seem to go into any, um, you know, crazy uh, landing issues. It seems to be fighting this wind pretty good. Uh, so, looking at my screen I don't think it's handling this um, you know not having much light let's see if I can get me on camera there there I am how you like my shirt today folks how you like my Nike hoodie today folks so, yeah, it's a shame I don't have any, uh, you know, camera adjustments here. But uh, let's see if I can take a picture with the video running. I don't think so. Let me stop the video, change it around, and take a picture. Uh oh. And then this must start the video over here. I thought that was a stop button. Let me uh, go back to video. 
Now, I can't seem to get the video rolling from the transmitter. Oh, there we go. I just had that kind of a long press of the uh, red button. So, uh, there I am in the video. Again, this looks awful dark on the screen. I hope it shows up better on the, um, you know, and everything else. Um, I'm about 50% battery life now. I haven't been timing this flight at all, but I'm about 50%. There's the, the live view of the screen, looks like. Um, got 14 satellites. Um, uh, well commit, you know, uh, connected to the transmitter with that bar indicator there. Um, so, um, yeah, that's about all we're really going to do in this, uh, you know, this little flight here. Um, but I'm going to say that Dustin Dunhill's problem, barometer problem, which is his unit or maybe the location he was flying at. Because you can see right now, look, it's just, I mean, it's drifting side to side a little bit or back and forth but uh, it's definitely hanging in the same spot in the air there it's not like you know go going up or down i mean it was low here initially but uh it's definitely holding its altitude up there now and uh, again i have almost a 10 mile per hour wind and gusting up to 15 and look at it it's just kind of staying at the same height so um Stories of having altitude hole problems are, um, you know, much exaggerated here. It's, uh, this unit's fine anyways. I can't speak to Dustin's unit, but my unit is holding altitude just fine. So, um, we're going to bring this thing in now. It says not much we can do out here. We're going to go for a much better test flight, hopefully tomorrow, if not Saturday, where we can get it out to a field, maybe get a little bit more sun. So, uh, you know, we can see what the d dynamic range is, um, you know, in different conditions. We're just, like, real cloudy here right now. So, um, I'm going to sit it down. Just, I'm not going to do a return to home since I don't have much room to work with here. We're just going to, like, manually bring it in. Old school here. All right, just holding the uh, throttle button downwards uh, cuts the motors off, so, um, you know, you know, you don't have to hit any buttons or anything. Let me stop this video here. You stop the video. So, um, overall, you know, my uh, first impression, you know, garage flight, um, everything uh, went as expected, um, you know, performed well. It, uh, I'll say it uh, performed, uh, you know, better than a, H501 uh, S and uh, a Bugs 2 and uh, you know didn't perform as well as a, um, a Mavic uh, Pro so again that's to be expected really so we're going to power off here alright power that off and power the controller off here alright so again this is the, uh, the kind of the First look, first, uh, you know, Ron's garage flight of the uh, Hubson uh, Zeno, the new, newly released Hubson Zeno. Um, so you can see there's no optical flow sensors or um, downward facing cameras on it. So, um, again, it's it's closer to the toy category as far as um, advanced features like that. So there's no optical avoidance on this, but... Um, but what separates it from its other brethren, like they said, the H501 or the Bugs 2, um, is that uh, it has a um, 4K 3-axis um, camera gim gimbal on it, which, again, uh, you have to go up to, um, you know, something like uh, the DJI series, the Mavic series, or some of the unique, uh, you know, drones that have uh, such features, and, and all those drones uh, cost, um, you know, much more... Um, money than this does especially when they were new i mean you know some of these drones like they they compare this a lot to the spark i mean the spark was only 359 at best buy on uh black friday but the spark was 699 uh i believe 599 or six i think it was 699 when it was first released so we're talking about kind of a probably an end of end of life uh product here um i'm sure um will be a spark um two uh coming soon or, or else the Spark 1 will be, uh, you know, just a legacy product that they will eventually discontinue. But my point is, the 359 is is kind of as end of the run price. I mean, wait until this thing starts getting discounted. I mean, it's 369 now. But what about um, 
six months from now, what about next summer, you know, next holiday season, this thing will be discounted. I, I, one, it won't be long, when I say long, you know, six months to a year, this thing will be under $300 on a sale at a place's Gearbest or Banggood, um, and that's when it'll really be kind of uh, uncomparable to as far as the value you can get. A 4K 60 frame per second camera, 3 axis gimbal, for under $300. Um, so, um, I will stop here. I'll talk too long, and we'll kind of go inside the bench and go over a few things, too. All right. See you soon.